I'm Austin Lugo. I'm Andrew Harp. This is With Nothing to Say. Let's talk about Deadbeat at Dawn. Before we get started today, next week we're going to be watching The Grave of the Fireflies. I wanted to watch an animated film because we have not watched an animated film for the podcast in well over a year now, and I probably haven't watched an animated film myself in well over a year. I can't think of the last animated film I've watched. What's your last animated film? You saw that uh, Pinocchio movie, right? Oh, yeah. It's not animated, though. That's claymation. I feel like that's animated i mean that's not different i think it counts i guess it's made by the people did uh fantastic mr fox everyone looks like puppets it's disturbing we'll talk about it i think it counts but maybe you haven't seen a handmade 2d animated movie in a while i've probably seen a couple other animated films honestly i just haven't thought about it like some something with my sister or something Mm -hmm. i don't know but anyways that's what we're gonna watch next week so get excited yeah (laughs) this week we're watching the infamous Deadbeat at Dawn. Infamous? I don't know. Could be infamous to somebody. I guess, yeah. Sure. You picked this movie. Why'd you pick this movie, Andrew? I think I saw it on Letterboxd a while ago. I saw a lot of people that I follow enjoyed it. it seemed good. A little different than other movies we've watched recently. Different than the last movie, but... Yeah. If you could describe this movie in one sentence, how would you describe it? It's scuzzy and... uh the second half of the movie in particular is like, this isn't, this isn't really a sentence, but I, I was thinking about this, like the second half of the movie is like, maybe even like the last like third of the movie, it feels like the embodiment or the visual interpretation almost of a rapid dog that's chasing after you. It's got foam and even like blood all over its mouth. That's how like the last maybe half or third of the movie feels. The beginning, I would say, maybe like the first half, is good it's a little silly and then it keeps ramping up and up in intensity very quickly that's how i would say the trajectory of the movie is from a broad point of view (laughs) it's a very low budget clockwork orange-esque i guess yeah the gang stuff is kind of yeah i was thinking of the warriors yeah it has very warrior-like vibes to it It also had some of the vibes of Julius Caesar, not Julius Caesar. Uh, We watched it for the podcast. Black Caesar? No. Yeah, you're thinking of Black Caesar. Okay. Yeah. I kept thinking of that movie for whatever reason. This movie feels like Jim Van Beber, who is the writer, director, star. It feels like he saw The Warriors and Mad Max and it was like, yeah, I'm going to make that in Dayton. I don't know if he's from Dayton or not. He was at least probably living in Dayton at the time. Yeah. The movie's filmed in Dayton, Ohio which is amazing. I love... So scuzzy. It's such a dirty, fucked up looking city. Obviously, like, they're probably scouted, like, those locations, right? Like, the most, the worst places. But there's, like, no green. There's no grass. There's barely any trees everywhere that they go. It just looks kind of shitty. No (laughs) offense to people from who live in Dayton, Ohio. (laughs) I'm sure it's a wonderful town, but anywhere in the Midwest in the middle of the winter is... A bit scuzzy, a bit miserable. I mean, I don't think you see the sun once in this movie. It's just cold and cloudy and crummy everywhere. The movie also doesn't have a sunny disposition. I'll say that. I'll say that. <laughs> but yeah, I love the location. I love the day in Ohio locations. It's perfect. The location scouting that they do and the places that they go, it looks as good as any like Walter Hill, you know, Streets of Fire Warriors movie. It's obviously low budget, so it has that going for it. It's not as like fucking, you know, vivid as like the Warriors or Streets of Fire, but the look of the movie in terms of like where they go and the spaces that they use, they look about as good, I would say, given their limitations. Absolutely. And the movie opens on the protagonist's girlfriend partner person at a fortune teller or tarot card reader. Yeah, part of the movie is interesting. Yeah. There's... It's this sort of mystic thing going on, which I thought would be more involved in the movie. Like, I thought there'd be more mysticism. It's more in that when she's alive, right? Because she's in it, into yes. it. But there's no real mystic aspects to this film, other than some of the stuff that she does, other than going to see a fortune teller and utilizing the Ouija board. And the scene when he goes to sleep in the cemetery later on, too. 
when he dreams. It's a dream, but still. That's true. That dream sequence is pretty rat. Yeah, but you're right. She goes to a fortune teller and she's like upset. And the fortune teller doesn't tell her what she wants to hear. Shockingly. Oh, no, no. It's not good news. And then this woman, before she leaves, she goes and blows out like six different candles. I mean, she blows out all the fucking It's so candles. funny that she blows them all out. There are some really <laughs> unintentionally funny moments in the movie. Not as much as like maybe some people would expect. Mm-hmm. It, it's really a very good, serious movie. But I love like, you know, she blows out all the candles at the table and she gets up and behind her, like on the uh, ledges are like 20 candles. They're like 50 <laughs> candles. And I thought she was going to like blow out <laughs> so each did I. candle. But no, she just like blows out a few and then leaves. <laughs> oh, so funny. The thing about this movie, and I would say... Perhaps the weakest slash strongest point of this film is the editing at times can be a little all over the place. At times it's very wild, insane. And then at other times scenes will go on much longer than they probably should. Really? I guess the candle blowing out thing was a little funny. (laughs) I mean, I think there's a couple of scenes that are candle blowing-esque in which Not that it's bad by any means, but just that it's a bit amateurish, you know, young filmmaker, student filmmaker stuff. I'm thinking of like maybe like a scene or two as well that are just kind of like thrown in there. Like there's that one scene, remember, where he steals that guy's motorcycle. Yeah. (laughs) It's not really that has anything to do with the the story or anything. It's just he's just kind of messing around, I guess, like he's having fun stealing people's motorcycles and stuff. Maybe it was to uh, introduce the fact that he's really good at using nunchucks, that scene, but it's still kind of like thrown in there this man has the greatest nunchuck skills possibly of all time bro i was just thinking about this like nunchucks are kind of like a lame weapon right like you see him and you're just like what the like what like how can you even use that in this movie though it it is legitimately cool how awesome they make him look and how powerful he is with the nunchucks it's amazing i've never seen that in any other movie i can't think of one I haven't seen like a lot of martial arts movies. There's probably some martial arts movies that really are probably way better than this. Yeah. But he's good. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he like hits people in the head and stuff. So good. That would hurt. I have never seen anyone utilize nunchucks to the degree that this man does in this movie. And just his karate skills in general. They're almost superhero-esque. He's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned like the Warriors and Mad Max and stuff like that, like that were influences that are clearly influenced, especially like the last part of Mad Max where he gets revenge and first half of the movie reminds me of the Warriors with the silly gangs and stuff. Martial arts movies are probably another big influence on him, I would have to guess. (laughs) Yeah, this man has clearly studied the many martial arts. I mean, it's impressive. (laughs) Yeah, he's cool. Maybe a little over the top at times, but I do think at times... There are scenes in this film, like the motorcycle scene, where they're just trying to fill up space so it can be a feature-length film. I think this film might have worked better as a 60-minute film. I mean, it's not long at all. It's only an hour and 20 minutes, so it goes by pretty quick. But even so... There's like one or two scenes, maybe. I think we could make the pacing even faster here and just be like, boom, boom, boom. But that's just me. I would say that the pacing really ramps up once you get into like the last half or third of the movie. That's where like things are kind of like incredible. And and we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I like the scene in the beginning where they go to the cemetery to fight. (laughs) That scene is very silly to me. The wild scene. They basically are going to do a 1v1. They're battling gangs. The spiders and the... What was the... I don't know. <laughs> Goose is the main character. I'm trying to think of the gang that Goose is in. I think it's called the the Ravens. So the spiders and ravens, they're doing a 1v1, kind of the leader of each. Yeah, the evil guy with the mustache. The evil mustache man. <laughs> and first they're going to go 1v1, classic dual style guns. But they're like, no. I like that they have like these Civil War rifles. <laughs> these like world war ii rifles yeah sorry continue but instead of the 1v1 they decide that they are going to fight it out via knife and they just cut the shit at each other i mean they're just throwing their knives it's a good introduction to the violence of the movie (laughs) i would say so they cut the shit out of their hands and faces just every part of their body blood's going everywhere it's a good fight i'd say so it's so fun Oh, another funny thing. I like the cop at the beginning, remember, that stops him from attacking and assaulting Goose's girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> His cop outfit is so funny. It doesn't look real at all. It just looks like no. a costume. <laughs> and, but that's fine. That's fine. That's forgivable. Anyway, 
Yeah, Goose wins? I guess so. He was the last person standing. He doesn't lose. But he has to, like, go back to the apartment and heal because he's been, like, stabbed a couple times. Brutally. He's, like, pouring, like, alcohol all over himself. And his girlfriend is helping him and all that. And (laughs) he has to endure this horrible, like, pain, like, in his hand and stuff. Like, it's kind of uh, brutal. I definitely vibe with all of the outdoor scenes. I did think they did some yeah. great location scouting in Dayton. The indoor scenes on their hand, I mean, it's clear they just found like one of their apartments or houses and just shot. Bro, we're going to get to apartment later that I love in the movie. I think all the apartments <laughs> are fine. Like it's like they look like apartments that these people would live in. Yeah, no, I agree. They're just very empty and spare, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It reflects the situations in which these people are living in but i just found a little harsh in lighting it's clear that we don't have the best gaffers in the world on this set they use a lot of like red and green light which is a little christmasy for me but i don't mind it (laughs) (laughs) like it's a little too like it's either like kind of like harsh light maybe from like the room itself or like the sun or like these like red and green lights which i think they use to its effect but yeah it's a it's hard. <laughs> I mean, it's not a big deal. At the end of the day, it just makes the film look a little amateurish, a little student film esque. But I love how the apartments look. Like I love just like everything looks like completely fucked up, and <laughs> it does. They like live in squalor. It's, it's lovely. And Goose and his girly friend are not getting along. They're getting in fights. They're pissed at each other. They're angry. He wants to do gang shit. He wants to be a gang member guy. And she's like, like, can you stop? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> no, don't do that. And he, after he's healed, he's like, I got to go check out the streets or whatever. And she's like, that's stupid as fuck. You're really dumb. And he's like, whatever. And he leaves. And then he goes like on these little, like he steals a motorcycle. It just kind of like does nothing for like yep. a few minutes. <laughs> And he practices nunchucks abilities in the cemetery. <laughs> does some karate moves. Yeah, he does some karate moves. And then he goes back to see his girlfriend and she's really mad and they have a little fight. But she's pissed. He's clearly a karate master, a nunchuck master. Yeah. You can't bring him down. You can't be brought down. The actors definitely put a hundred percent into this, even if I didn't think anyone was like particularly terrible. I thought everything was fine. I think it's all passable. I don't think it's necessarily the fault of the actors. I think some of the writing is a bit, uh, it's not a hundred percent, but it gets the job done. Everyone does what they need to do. I think it's all suitable. Yeah. I think their relationship works. I think it feels good enough. Anyway, like, yeah, like they get into an argument again and he promises to no longer be in the gang anymore. He's going to get out of the game. No more, no more nunchucks, no more any of that. He goes and meets his number two, but his number two has become the number one. He's been kicked out of the gang, apparently, for whatever reason, because he's been gone for a while, I guess, is why he's not. Yeah, he's just like, you're you're lame because you have a girlfriend. (laughs) You have a girlfriend, which means you're like an idiot. We hate you. His buddy is now the leader of the Ravens and the Spiders have joined forces with him. But that's okay. He goes to the woods. He goes to the nice location, the woods, which they picked a nice location. They have sex. So it's, I guess it's not that big a deal. And then she also gives him that uh, cross necklace too. Yes. The mysticism comes back, even though he doesn't believe in. He doesn't really give a fuck. Nah, he doesn't give a fuck. This scene kind of remind me of like uh, that uh, Clint Eastwood movie, Play Misty for Me, where they go in the uh, woods and they have sex. I was thinking of the same thing. <laughs> This is like the second movie where that's happened. I guess it happens often in many movies. It happens a lot. People be going to the woods. I mean, that's Shakespeare. I suppose you're right about that. People just love to go to the woods and have sex. But yeah, Goose is just like, I'm out. He's done. But they're not done with him. So at this point in the film, I'm trying to remember why he has to leave the apartment. But he has to go. He's going to sell some coke. Right. He's got to sell some coke. Because he's not in a gang anymore, but he's still... He's still selling coke. So he'd be doing that. And while he does that, he tells his girlfriend, lock the door. Which they just put like a a padlock, basically, on the outside of the door. That is so funny to me. That means she's locked in there. Like, she cannot get out of her own home. Like, there's no way. Maybe these apartments suck so bad that they just don't have (laughs) regular locks. Shouldn't the lock be on the inside, though? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> it's really rough out here. I mean, it's almost as if they're living in a storage unit, which I guess they could be. There's no like windows or anything. Yeah, I mean, like these apartments could be anything. Who knows what <laughs> they are, where they are. 
Yeah, every apartment that you go into is just disgusting. It does not look good. But he leaves, and she does her Ouija board thing. And she's like, is, is he going to die tonight? Is someone going to kill him? That's such a good-ass scene. It's one of my favorite scenes. So Ouija board's like, nah, he's good, man. What about me? She's going to be brutally murdered. And you're like, ah, shit. And right before that, too, of course, it ramps up to the guys breaking into the apartment because the evil mustache guy tells two of his dudes, like, kill Goose. And they're like, okay. And then he, like, punches his pregnant girlfriend. Remember that? Yeah. Which is a very random kind of scene that never pays off or anything like that. It's just, yeah. I guess, to show how evil and like not nice he is she's like i'm pregnant and he's like wow and then he punches her in the face whatever i guess you get that really great monologue from the really crazy uh bearded guy that guy's fucking insane he's a great actor he's he's legitimately crazy yes where he's like i, I hate people i don't care you know he, he's like a monologue about how much he hates people and how much he doesn't mind killing people at all he loves it very good <laughs> he's like there's nothing better than killing a man like that's the greatest feeling in the world. It's scary. And you're like, oh my God, Goose's girlfriend is going to die. Like she's, it's over with. He also has this weird obsession with snakes, which comes back quite a few times in the movie. I don't know what it is with snakes, but he loves snakes. It's the intestines thing. Remember that uh, thing that he says? Yeah. He's also got like snakes and shit. Yeah. I don't know. He's kind of like with the snakes. I think he, he has that one snake. I think he's just like teasing Goose mm -hmm. in a very weird kind of roundabout way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it it works. It's weird enough, I think. Yeah. <laughs> in character. It's definitely something that character would do. Yeah, absolutely. Like he sells a coke to the guy and the guy's like, "Why do you care? I'm going to sell it to kids." And <laughs> I like that, that that's a good line of dialogue. There's some really good lines. Like, "I'm going to sell it to kids." And I forget what was the second thing. He's like, "Why do you care? Why do you fucking care?" And he's like, "Okay." He walks away. And then he gets back and like his girlfriend is fucking destroyed by the two crazy guys who just brutally beat her to death with a golf club and a bat they just they don't even have a gun no <laughs> i think they add like smushy sounds yes. when like he goes in to like pick her up and be like no you could hear like like these like goopy sounds i think to show that like her intestines have been like ripped out of her or something like that you don't see anything they don't like do anything but they add the sounds in <laughs> like what the fuck is that sound <laughs> it's wild and he picks his girlfriend up he's all sad he's crying and he just takes her to the trash compactor and just throws her in. That doesn't make any sense. I was also very confused about that. I love it. Like, I love that detail. I would never change it. But it is very, very weird and funny. <laughs> he doesn't bury her. He throws her in a trash compactor. Is that just what you do? Like, it's very just like, this is what you do. I've never seen that before. It's unexplained. Yeah, he's just like, yep, she dies. So I got to put her in the trash compactor. I don't know. It's very strange. <laughs> it's a little confusing, but I don't mind it. It's very Dayton, Ohio. So I'm, I'm okay with it. But yeah, he throws her in the trash compactor. And Goose is completely devastated. And so he decides to go and see his father at his apartment. He breaks into his father's apartment. And he breaks into a lot of apartments in this film. There's a lot of climbing up fire escapes like many 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 scenes he's a very athletic guy too by the way a very athletic man quite the gymnast he's climbing up fucking fire escapes left and right very impressive and so he breaks into his father's house and his father is a alcoholic heroin addict just this awful human he's being. amazing great performance great performance from this man <laughs> i love the dad it took me a minute to figure out that it was his dad you have to take a bit of context from things, but you get it. He says dad, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a low budget movie. It's kind of hard to tell. And yeah, he's just like, I need to stay here, dad. Da, 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 da. He's like, you got money? You got money? Like, And then like he'll, he gets heroin. He's like shooting up and stuff. And I like the part where he's like, dad, you really want to know what happened to me? My girlfriend died. And he like tells the whole story about how his girlfriend died. And then his dad is like, do you have any money? <laughs> like, he, doesn't, <laughs> he isn't paying attention. He gives a very good heroin addict performance where he's just like i don't i don't give a shit about anything like i'm just here for the heroin man just here for the money yeah please you have some money please i need it yeah i like when he's like busting to his room while he's sleeping he's like you can't ask any questions i need your money <laughs> <laughs> that's a it's a crazy performance it's a really good performance really great character it's sad yeah and this apartment too is particularly scuzzy such a gross apartment and this man it's like an abandoned apartment Ugh. yeah and he puts a needle between his toes because that's what heroin addicts do. It's gross. So gross. That makes me cringe. Ugh, yes. I hate watching people put needles and I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it either. 
it's particularly gross because when he does it, blood splurts out. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, my God. They really nail it. <laughs> How like, cringy it is. Ugh. But Goose is not into it. He's not having a good time. He's pissed off, yeah. He's having a terrible time. He's just absolutely miserable. His girlfriend's dead. The gang doesn't want him. No one wants this man. He's super punished. Yeah. The world hates him. So he goes out and goes on a bender, basically. He gets super drunk at a bar, which the bar, one of my favorite locations in the film. Great bar. Very red. <laughs> so much red. Very red. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we said, when they're inside, they like the red. And I like the red in the bar. It kind of like feels, you know, like neon sign to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, he like messing around with this girl and she's like getting angry at him and he almost gets into a fight and he's super drunk and he gets he basically kicks himself out and he's kind of pathetic, just kind of roaming around. He's stumbling through the streets and he plops down in an alley with a gun and he sits across from what you can only assume is a homeless man or, or some sort yeah. of <laughs> addict yeah. of some kind. Yeah, he's so punished. This part of the movie is good. I like the editing at this part because he's like really like he's really about to do it. You know, this man holds a gun. and He's like, I'm going to kill myself. And the guy's like, oh, OK. Yeah. He's like, what are you going to do with that gun? He's like, <laughs> I'm going to shoot myself. I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> That's cool. I love his reaction. Best reaction yeah, of all time. He's so fun. Dude, it's so good. I love it. He's like, OK, you see him, too. You, you do see a shot where he shoots himself in the head. It's great. And just like so much blood, a lot of blood in the movie. I mean, that goes without saying. <laughs> They definitely didn't skimp out on the blood here. Yeah. They're just kind of like, what if like Warriors and like Mad Max and those movies, what if they just had more blood? Like, why not have like more <laughs> blood? Why not? <laughs> yeah. Why not make those movies more violent? Because I feel like those movies just weren't violent enough. Honestly, those movies aren't that violent. I mean, Mad Max is like maybe violent for like the last like 10 minutes, I guess. Yeah. Warriors, I mean. It's more of the idea of violence than any actual violence. If I'm remembering correctly, there's not like a lot of blood and gore or anything like that. No. This one doesn't really do anything off screen. So Goose is over it. He's like, I'm going to shoot myself in the head. Holds the gun to his head. Right before he shoots himself, the leader of the gang. The Ravens. Yeah. Stops him. He's like, no, you can't shoot yourself. You idiot. I hate you. <laughs> He's like, I hate you. You can't kill yourself yet. I don't care if you kill yourself, but you can't do it because I need you. You got one last job for you. And by the way, here's the guy that killed your girlfriend. <laughs> this scene is like, it feels so rabid when he like tries to fight and kill the mustache guy. It really does legitimately feel really rough and tumble. Them just kind of like fighting and they beat up Goose and then Goose gets up again to fight them. He can't be stopped. Yeah, he really, really wants to kill him. It doesn't seem like a very good idea, but I guess he's just... It's a terrible idea. But they're just like, we need you, Goose. Like, we need more guys or whatever. They need Goose karate skills. Right. And as we know, like, the ultimate plan anyway for the spiders is to kill all the ravens. So I'm sure they're just kind of like, eh, we're going to kill him anyway. We might as well go ahead and, you know, use him to get, like, a bunch of money. That's fine. So their plan is to rob an armored car and steal all the money. It's proto heat. It is. <laughs> and so they all get together, both sides. They're all angry. They're all upset with each other. Yeah. But they're going to do it. They're going to come together for this one final mission. And they go over the plan, kind of. They vaguely go over the plan. But everyone's got their part. And then they rob the armored truck. Goose pulls out some ninja stars. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Goose kills anyone. He throws the ninja star at the guy in the head. I mean, I don't think it kills the security guard. That was a but... gang member. Oh, no, no. I know what you're no, talking about. No. Yeah, I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. He fucking yeah, ropes yeah. down he throw... from like the you're top right. of I the building. About, about that. <laughs> and pulls out one of his many different. He's got, he's so cool. <laughs> he's got all of these weapons. That really did look like he propelled down. It really did yeah. look like it. No, at I least like he, yeah, at least did. like two or three, four stories. It's very impressive. This man fucking tied a rope. And that moment of the movie is like ten seconds. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looked dangerous. And you know, he 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 really did it for that shot. It's amazing. He propels down and he throws a ninja star right at the security guard's forehead. Perfect shot. And all the group comes in and they fucking murder the security guard. A couple other people get shot and killed. And they take the money. Like, it's it's a very quick, just like, we did it. Like, they just go and rob it. It just happens. I like to, they steal $100,000. It's like, oh. <laughs> In one bag. 
it's just kind of funny because it's like, oh, I mean, only a hundred thousand dollars. Like, guys killed like two people. And, well, inflation. I guess, yeah, a hundred thousand is quite a bit, but I don't know. I feel like even at the time, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> they're celebrating. They're having a good time. They're at their like den that has like mm-hmm. Playboy pinups and like graffiti everywhere. And Goose, you know, he's kind of like apprehensive, right? Because he's he doesn't trust the spiders. And, you know, his buddy, the leader, is just like, fucking idiot. Like, you shouldn't worry, you know? It's all going to be okay. Yeah, whatever. But we do know that their plan is to kill the ravens. Kill every single one of them. Mm -hmm. They split up into their two areas, and now they're going to meet together to split up the money, I guess. Yeah, but they're going on the spider's turf. And the leader of the ravens is like, we can't bring in weapons. Like, this was supposed to be a friendly, you know, trade-off. They hand us our half of the money and all goes away. So no one brings weapons except, of course, Goose, who is just packed to the brim. Yeah, he's got he's got so many stuff. <laughs> he's so cool. He's like, I'm packing. <laughs> he doesn't trust anyone. So they go and meet the spiders. And it's exactly what Goose thinks it is. It's a trap. And the spiders just lay hell. They got their machine gun. And they just start murdering everyone. They kill everybody. They kill like all of the guys. They kill everyone but Goose. Goose is able to like throw a couple knives and shoot a couple of people in the head. And he's able to like steal the money and run away with the whole gang like chasing after him. It's very fun. I think he like ropes, he like has like a chain and he like flies around and stuff. Great. Yeah. And he runs away. He gets the hell out of there. They go on a bit of a chase. He's getting chased by a car and he jumps off of a bridge, falls into the water. You really do see him jump. You see him jump off. It's pretty wild. They're running around. Everyone's dying. Car crashes. All kinds of fun shits going on. He goes to a gas station. (laughs) That scene is wild. This man walks into a gas station and he just sets down $100,000. Like he just puts it on the ground and he gets himself a soda. And the guy's like, you got to pay for it. And instead of just paying him, you know, one of the many hundreds of thousands of dollars this man has. He threatens to murder him for no particular reason, this poor gas station owner. And then comes perhaps the greatest line in all of cinema, where a a boy and his grandmother, probably like a 20-year-old boy, is sitting in a car with his grandmother at this gas station. And the boy says to his grandma, he says, Grandma, give me your gun. Shoot him in the head. What a wild moment. <laughs> just completely, I guess it's just like nowhere. Things, in Dayton, things in Dayton really <laughs> suck lately. Like everybody is like on edge and super violent. You know, you, you could, could get shot. And they kill the attendant. They kill the guy working at the gas station. They murder him. They murder the hell out of him. It's so funny. <laughs> like, they're like, shoot him in the head. And, and Goose runs away. That seems a little silly. But it's good. Yeah, Goose is like, oh, fuck. And he runs away. <laughs> he, well, he doesn't even say anything. He just leaves. And then the scene after that, also another very strange scene in the film. A Great man scene. is eating breakfast at a diner. And he orders two breakfasts. There was two breakfasts. It's a oddly long scene. And he's eating his breakfast. I, I like the scene too. But the scene before this is when he goes into the cemetery. Oh, and the wild dream sequence. Yeah. yeah. Which we talked about, but yeah, I mean, that's a great scene where it's just has great editing. I think the editing in the scene, he sees like his like girlfriend, like wearing the bloody sheets walking and, and then the evil villain mustache guy. He's great, by the way, that actor and character is great. Very evil. Very, very evil. He like cuts the skull open to Ugh, like, with, so to, like reveal the brain and stuff. That's a really good dream sequence. It's really good got a bunch of snakes on like a sword i would be very proud to have uh, come up with that dream sequence is great it's one of the best sequences in the movie it's all over the place it's wild it's gross it's got great prop design it's in a graveyard also this kid he falls asleep fucking anywhere like this man will just lay on the ground yeah that's a good point he sleeps like on the floor everywhere i guess he's just he's you know he's a gang member he's a rough and he's a very tired man he's he's got a lot (laughs) going on in his life but yeah the scene at the diner is a very confusing scene I mean, I love it. I love the scene, but I have no idea what it has to do with the film at all or anything. The point is that he's making a phone call at the diner to call the sister of his girlfriend so he can get a meeting later to give her the stolen money. But for some reason, there's this weird guy there who gets mad at the waitress for not putting out food for like God or something. 
I can only imagine this is maybe Jim Van Beber like trying to make like a comment about like religion or Christianity or something like that. Probably. Like a guy who's supposedly Christian, but he's being annoying and kind of uh, mean, you know? I uh, wrote down a couple of quotes from this scene because it's... It's so good. It's a baffling scene. The man says, go to the kitchen and make God some breakfast, you bitch. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> and then the next thing he says is... I suppose if you had breakfast with the Lord, you'd make him pay. Dope. What a strange moment in the film. I, I love it. It doesn't make any sense, but it's great. It's no. just like something that happens at the diner that he's like taking the phone call. Whatever, I guess. It's so good. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, whatever. But my man, Goose, he's going to the train station. I'm telling you, like I'm looking at these loca- like these locations are just, they suck. Like <laughs> I should visit it sometime. I wonder how far it is from here. But yeah, they go to the train station, and I mean, this shit is abandoned. Like, when was the last time a train went through there? I don't know. And yeah, he falls asleep on the ground there for some reason. Again, just falling asleep everywhere. He's falling asleep. This man needs to not sleep so much. It's dangerous. That's how people keep coming up on him. Sleeps too much. And they wake him up, too. They do. Whatever. It's a whole group of them, and they're going to get him. Anyway, he's there. Goose wasn't expecting them there. They were able to follow him. And I would say, like, the last part of the movie is quite amazing and exciting. It's a blast. And they really go all out. He is surrounded by the evil goons of the spiders, and they're ready to murder him. And they all have their own separate weapon, right? They held their own expertise in whatever weapon or fighting style. But they are no match for Goose and his plethora of nunchucks and ninja stars and knives and other weaponry. He's so cool. He beats up everybody. He (laughs) kills everybody. It's great. I love when he fights with these nunchucks and he like strangles that guy with the nunchucks. He doesn't even, (laughs) he like brutally strangles that guy and like blood is everywhere. (laughs) He goes crazy. He goes ham. Yeah. I love when he kills on the crazy guy that killed his girlfriend. That is so satisfying when he like he throws them off the bridge. <laughs> it's so good. He throws them off the roof. And for some reason, they decide that when he hits the ground, he's going to get run over by a car and decapitated. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love that. That is so good to really nail in his death. Oh, it's so good. It'd be one thing if he just (laughs) fell off the bridge. No, he has to get hit by a car, too, when he falls. And you watch his super bloody head just roll away. (laughs) And you really see the progression of the fighting because, like, Goose is getting more and more, like, caked in blood. Like, his face and everything just gets more and more fucked up. Yeah. All the fighting is great. And eventually, his girlfriend's sister eventually shows up in the car. And then the, the mustache evil guy, like, he, like pushes himself into the car and is driving away and you have that crazy scene where he actually did there's some crazy physical stuff that jim van beber does in the movie he like puts his arm through the window and he like i think they probably tighten it as tight as they could on his arm and he's like kind of like there like holding up and they're driving around like pretty fast (laughs) like through these like alleyways and i mean that's really him you know that's wild that's not like a stunt double or anything like that (laughs) no no way No, this man throws himself basically onto a car and they drive the car into an alley and they're swerving and then his arm gets all ripped up. There's like all that fucking blood and all of that shit. And the girlfriend's sister comes to the rescue and does uh, multiple punches right to the penis. (laughs) Weird moment. Yeah, and then they have a fight. Goose and and the villain have a fight. It's a really good fight. Kind of reminds me of a John Carpenter movie. Lots of stabbing. Yeah, lots of... He stabs Goose several times. He, like, bites off his finger. Yeah. I watched a movie not too long ago where, like, someone rips somebody's throat out. I'm trying to remember what movie that was, though. Oh, I think it was uh, MacGruber. (laughs) (laughs) He's constantly talking about, like, ripping some... Oh, no. What You know what it was? It was Roadhouse. In Roadhouse, they talk about the fact that Patrick Swayze's character can, like, rip somebody's, like, throat out. (laughs) And, uh... He does to, like, one of the main (laughs) villain guys. He, like, rips his throat out. By the way, Roadhouse, 1989. This movie, 1988. They took it from them. Damn. That'd be a great double feature. Yeah. Both movies, great. Both movies have uh, throats being ripped out. But, yeah, he rips out the fucking throat of the guy, and there's just blood everywhere. I've never seen that before. I've never seen a movie where someone just rips out another man's throat. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could just... I mean, think about it. Like... (laughs) I mean, I guess. I don't know. I've if you really, attempted. really wanted to, I think you could. But 
I mean, that would be that would be horrible. Yeah, I've seen two so far. I can't think of a third movie. But yeah, I've seen at least two movies where a man gets his throat ripped out. It's wild. <laughs> and then, yeah, he just dies. And then he just dies. He tells his sister, like, I loved your sister and stuff. And then she runs away completely mortified. Of Can you imagine being that woman? Can you imagine? That's so funny. Like, just getting a random call from some guy who's like, I know your sister. It was some guy. She doesn't even know who the guy is. No, she's like, she has no idea who it is. She hasn't talked to her sister in, like, two years. Yeah. And she's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then she witnesses the most the most abject violence of all time. Yeah, she she gets a random call from a stranger. She shows up and accidentally hits a man with her car, then gets yeah. kidnapped, then punches a man in the penis, then watches two men beat the shit out of each other, murder each other, then watches a man rip the throat out of another man, and then watches the other man die. And is just handed a hundred thousand dollars, which she is of stolen money. How do you react to that? What What are you supposed to do? <laughs> oh. She just runs away. <laughs> like, that's it. Imagine just being a normal person, just living your life. There's really like no. Um... No, that's the end of the movie. That's it. Yeah, that's the end of the movie. He he basically walks away, and he like lays on the ground, and he just dies. <laughs> he just dies. He just dies. Like yeah, it's just a sad ending where he dies. So. <laughs> That's pretty much the movie. <laughs> Everyone dies. Like, pretty much every character dies. Yep. Except for the sister. They do that little cool thing where they have those, like, black and white photographs or whatever at the end. That was kind of unusual, but cool. I had no expectations going into this movie. I didn't know what the movie was really about, other than the little that you told me, which is always the best way to go into a movie. I think going to a movie blind is the best experience to have, especially with a film like this. Very low budget, just kind of people doing their best, shooting movies in Dayton, Ohio. Always fun to see. Just a bunch of no-name actors and people just really trying to make a movie. And I really respect that. I really love people out there just doing what they can, especially in the 80s when, like, shooting a film was so fucking hard and, you know, you had to fucking cut the actual film. Like, there's just so much respect in making any sort of movie. I don't think the movie itself, for me, was anything spectacular. I think some of it is very wild and insane and definitely some great special effects especially for the budget and clearly everyone's putting their heart and soul into this as i mentioned earlier i think it runs a little long there's a couple of scenes in this that just don't really go anywhere or don't really add anything of value to the film i think the film could have been cut down to a solid 60 minutes and because of that i found myself especially in the first half of the film just a bit bored there just wasn't really a whole lot to hold on to. It's just kind of people wandering around. Whenever there's a fight scene or people doing karate or that kind of shit, that stuff's always super fun. But whenever they're not doing that, it just felt a little slow to me, a little dull. So overall, I'm going to give this movie a very solid 5 out of 10. I think like in terms of like low budget movies that are made by just, yeah, like regular people like in Dayton, Ohio, this is probably like the best result that you can maybe hope for i really really love the movie i think it's quite tactile i think it's quite well made and i really found the movie to be quite moving i found it to be very beautiful i don't think it's more than just as action i think it has a lot going on under the surface than maybe some people might give it credit for i really like was kind of like moved by some of the story beats and the creation itself in terms of it being made with no money and probably took forever to make i think i agree that the second half is maybe a little bit better than the first half because it really like ramps up in energy and craziness and it's totally rabid rabid and just violent that last action scene is amazing i don't know i think that this movie can go toe-to-toe with any quote-unquote high budget movie obviously it's derivative of a lot of other movies that we've mentioned which is fine because at least you know it's in it's in an interesting location it's made by people and has people in it that you don't really see very often, so it's interesting in that way. I would describe the movie as quite beautiful and quite amazing. It's just the best possible movie that you could hope for, given their technical and like given all their limitations. So yeah, I'm I'm thinking uh, eight out of ten for sure. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening. You can find everything I do at Austin Lugo One Two. I'm on a letterbox at Retro Andrew R E T R Zero Andrew. And you can find this podcast wherever you hear podcasts. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Theater42 and With Nothing to Say. And thank you all for listening. Thank you.